Okay. So where are we going? Secret. Trust me. You trust me, right? After bringing Joel to a deserted house, Ellie tries to stop the bleeding from his wound. When she asks that he help her fix him, Joel only instructs her to leave and head north to where Tommy is. As she refuses to listen, Joel has to push her away. Undeterred, she covers him with his jacket before climbing up the stairs. Months earlier, while still in Fedra school, Ellie is running laps in the gym, listening to her Walkman when suddenly her headphones are yanked away by a bully named Bethany. Ellie gets mad when Bethany mentions her missing best friend, and she immediately punches her. Later, inside Captain Kwong's office, Ellie states that it's Bethany who started the fight. Upon hearing that the bully is in the infirmary with 15 stitches, Ellie expects to be put in confinement again. But as Kwong knows doing so isn't effective with the girl, he decides to lay out the truth. He says she has two paths. The first one being that if she doesn't improve, she'll end up having the life of a grunt destined to do unfulfilling work and dying early, while the second path involves swallowing her pride and following orders. By doing so, she'll eventually become an officer, living a comfortable life away from danger. Kwong believes there's a leader in Ellie, and the girl is convinced to become an officer. That night, Ellie's sleep is interrupted when a hand clamps down on her mouth, but she's able to kick her assailant away, threatening the person with her knife before realizing it's her missing best friend, Riley. When Ellie asks where she's been, she doesn't believe it at first when the taller girl says she's joined the Fireflies. But upon seeing Riley's gun, she becomes frustrated. Riley distracts Ellie from her anger by asking her to come with her for just a few hours. Though she initially says no, Ellie eventually agrees and the two of them exit from the window. After entering another public building, they come across a dead man, who probably died from an overdose by mixing alcohol and drugs. Suddenly, the corpse falls through the floor, much to their shock. On the roof of the building, the two girls drink the stolen liquor, and Riley lets Ellie hold her gun for a quick moment. Riley also reveals how she got recruited into the Fireflies when a woman noticed her deftly avoiding guards. And when she asked Riley what she thought of Fedra, she responded that they're fascist bastards who should be tried for their crimes. And just like that, she was offered to be a Firefly, which she accepted. After traversing the roofs of buildings, Riley announces that they've arrived at their destination, the mall. Ellie reminds her that the place got sealed because it was full of infected but Riley claims otherwise. Inside, Riley directs her friend to go ahead, and though she's suspicious, Ellie complies. Suddenly, lights inside the mall come on, much to Ellie's amazement. Riley then appears and promises Ellie to show her the wonders she found in the mall. After Ellie is done being excited about riding an escalator, Riley brings her to a merry-go-round. The two enjoy the ride, giggling and drinking the alcohol from earlier. When the ride comes to an abrupt halt, Ellie asks Riley why she really left, saying they could make things better too if they stay in Fedra. Finally, Riley reveals the truth. As she's soon turning 17, she has received her assignment, sewage detail, which means standing guard while other people shovel excrement. Disheartened, Riley admits she panicked and ran away. For the next wonder, Riley takes Ellie to a photo booth, where they strike silly poses, and even though the resulting picture is faded, Ellie decides to keep it. Next, Riley brings her to an arcade, where Ellie is instantly fascinated by everything she sees. After Riley gets them some coins, the two play Mortal Kombat. Unbeknownst to them, in a different store, an infected comes to life. After they're done playing games, Riley brings Ellie to where she's been sleeping for the past nights, showing her a copy of the second volume of her favorite pun book. Much to Ellie's excitement, the two are giggling, reading each other puns, when Ellie notices a shelf full of bombs nearby. Riley swears that she'll never let the Fireflies use them on Ellie, but Ellie isn't convinced that they'll listen to Riley, and she walks away, with Riley chasing after her. When Riley reveals that she's leaving, Ellie stops. Riley says that the Fireflies are sending her to a post in the Atlanta QZ, and though she asked Marlene if Ellie could come, the woman said no. Hearing that it's her friend's last night in Boston, Ellie asks her why she brought her to the mall, to which Riley answers that she wanted to see her and say goodbye. Hurt and angry, Ellie leaves. 
but when she's about to exit the mall, she turns back. Just then, she hears screams. Quickly, she looks for Riley, only to find that Halloween prop is producing the screams, which is her friend's last wonder. After Ellie demands that Riley give her the pun book, the two have a talk, in which Riley says she wants to belong to a family again. Ellie accepts her decision to leave, even if it saddens her. Now smiling, the two girls don masks and dance to music. But then, Ellie begs Riley not to go. When Riley merely says okay, Ellie kisses her before apologizing, but Riley doesn't mind. Both girls are smiling, agreeing to figure things out when suddenly they hear a noise. Riley takes out her gun just as the infected emerges. The two of them run, but the infected trips Riley, causing her to lose consciousness. Ellie fights the monster alone, but even though she stabs him many times, he continues to attack. Thankfully, Riley wakes up, and with the two girls' combined efforts, they finish off the infected. Though Ellie is initially feeling triumphant, she despairs upon realizing she's been bitten on the forearm, with a crying Riley revealing that she has been bitten too. Angered by their sealed fates, Ellie smashes the store. As Riley doesn't want everything to end with just a bullet to their brains, she tearfully proposes for them to be poetic and lose their minds together. In the present, Ellie looks for anything to help Joel and manages to find some needle and thread and rushes back to Joel. With determination tinged with desperation, Ellie closes his wound, stitching his skin back together. Yeah. <laughs>